Greetings, I'm Hawken, and welcome to another training video here with TopDon. Today we're going to cover module cloning, and today we are working on a 2010 Audi A4. The CVT transmission is being replaced, and we need to clone the module in order to allow the vehicle to properly start and drive. So we're going to take you through the whole process today and walk you through the basic steps of module cloning. So it's a 2010 Audi A4. This vehicle has a CVT transmission. The designation for this transmission is 0AW. So that's 0 Ultra, uh, A as in Alpha, W as in Walter. So for tools that can do this particular function uh, in the Top Don line, all of the Top Don Phoenix Professional Series tools are capable of doing this function. Uh, the Phoenix Max, Phoenix Remote, Phoenix Smart, Phoenix Elite, Phoenix Lite 2, Phoenix Plus, and Phoenix Pro. You do need to purchase the T-Ninja box, which is purchased separately as an accessory kit. And the T-Ninja box then gets connected in conjunction with your Phoenix Professional Series tool in order to accomplish module cloning. So we'll go to the next step here show you a couple of the tools. So here are four of the current generation tools, the Phoenix Remote, the Elite, the Max, and the Smart. And then there's the Light 2 here on the top left, and the Phoenix Plus on the top right. Here is the T-Ninja box. Now when you order your T-Ninja box, you will get a nice blow molded plastic case with a number of accessories inside which you can use uh, specifically for EEPROM module cloning, as well as key cloning and key programming. So this is just a basic overview guide on module cloning when you are using the Phoenix Professional Series tools. Now remember, this is a general guide. It's not going to be specific to every single vehicle. So you're going to want to follow the directions on the tool, and you're also going to want to invest in attending some professional training on this subject if this is something that you plan to do on a regular basis. However, this video should give you some comfortability uh, performing the function with a Top Don Phoenix Pro Series tool. So some basic things you want to keep in mind before proceeding with any module cloning. You want to make sure you have a steady power supply to use, uh, when you are going to do any module cloning. You want something like our Top Don Tornado T30000, which is a 30 amp steady power supply, or a T90000, which is a 90 amp steady power supply. Now, why do you need a power supply instead of a regular battery charger? This is a question that comes up very frequently. Standard battery chargers do not provide steady voltage. Uh, steady voltage is a requirement for module programming and cloning operations. So if you're going to do module cloning, you want to get something that is considered a power supply, not a battery charger. So the T30,000 and T90,000 will supply a steady state voltage throughout a programming and cloning operation like what we're going to do today. Now, we've uh, one stipulation on that point. The 2015 and newer vehicles generally are going to need the T90,000 uh, because many of the newer vehicles require a high ridge, um, higher amount of amperage uh, in order to properly hold that voltage steady. Uh, another thing you want to make sure you're doing if you're doing module cloning is you want to do a pre-scan of the vehicle before removing the original module and establish what the problem is with the vehicle before you go cloning the module. Uh, you may be requested to replace and clone a module on a vehicle where perhaps that is actually not the main problem with the vehicle, in which case, if you replace that module and it's not the root cause of the problem, uh, the end customer of yours may complain and give you a hard time and even try to refuse to pay you for your services. So again, I would recommend pre-scanning the vehicle prior to doing any work on the vehicle. Save your pre-scan and document your repairs. The other thing you want to make sure of before you proceed any further in the cloning process is you want to make sure there are no communication faults with the vehicle. If you have any network related fault codes, you're going to want to make sure you resolve those first. 
if you have network related fault codes pointing to the module that you are being requested to clone, then you may need to stop uh, with the cloning operation because if you're not able to communicate directly with the module you are trying to clone, there is a possibility that you will not be able to retrieve the data from the original module and subsequently copy it to the replacement module. So just a couple of things you want to keep in mind before you go any further in the cloning process. Uh, again, make sure that the module that you want to clone is communicating properly and you will be able to extract the data out of it prior to proceeding with the cloning process. So some tool setup basics you want to keep in mind before you proceed with your cloning process. You're going to want to connect your T-Ninja box and your Phoenix Professional Series MDCI or VCI, also known as the dongle, in the Y cable. So the Y cable comes with the T-Ninja box. You're going to want to connect your dongle or VCI or MDCI to the Y cable. You're going to want to connect your T-Ninja box to the Y cable. And then you're going to want to connect the power supply cable to the Y cable and then connect the Y cable to the vehicle. Uh, you're going to want to follow the instructions on your Phoenix Professional Series Scan Tool to properly get this all connected. And you're also going to want to look at the wiring diagram provided by your Professional Series Tool in order to proceed with the cloning process. Uh, the tool will give you a wiring diagram showing you how to connect up your Phoenix Professional Series tool and your T-Ninja box directly to the module you want to clone before you proceed with the cloning process. So here we can see an example of what the tool is going to display. On the left hand side this is the current diagram for the T-Ninja box. So you can see we've got a Y cable here that connects our dongle or VCI directly to uh, the Y cable and then the Y cable connects to the vehicle and then we've got our T-Ninja box also connected to that Y cable. Uh, it's not shown in the picture here, but there is an additional little butt connector or uh, dongle connector where you plug in a power cord uh, directly to that Y cable as well. It is essential that you plug in that power cable to the Y cable as well. Otherwise, you will not properly power up the T-Ninja box, which can result in issues uh, with the programming process. The other thing you want to make sure you do is connect your VCI or MDCI dongle directly to your scan tool via USB. Now the only tool where this is not applicable would be the Phoenix Remote. Uh, the Phoenix Remote does not use a dongle. Uh, it uses a hardline cable directly from the body of the scan tool to the Y cable, so there is no USB connection required. So here is an example of the wiring diagram which you are going to receive. So this one is very limited. Basically, it's showing you the number of pins on the transmission control module itself where you will be connecting. And then the numbers that we see uh, from the arrows going outward here, which would be the 10, 8, 6, 9, and 1, are indicating which number cables on your uh, T-Ninja box are going to connect to these numbered pins on the transmission control unit. So this is just a couple of pictures from the job that was performed here. We can see on the left, uh, it's a, kind of a poor picture here, but you can see he's got all of the pins set up uh, connecting to the yellow cables which come off the T-Ninja box and going to the connector on the transmission control unit. And then on the right, he's got the T-Ninja box connected with the Y cable configuration and you can see his scan tool in the picture on the bottom right corner of the picture. So these are some essential steps uh, we're going to just talk about briefly here before we proceed to the video portion of the demonstration. So when you have your original module installed, you're going to connect the T-Ninja to the original module following the provided wiring diagram. We're going to read the original module EEPROM data and save it to the scan tool. Then we're going to read the original module flash file and save it to the scan tool. Then we're going to decrypt and save the flash and EEPROM data to the scan tool. Then we're going to disconnect the original module from the T-Ninja box and we're going to connect the new or used module to the T-Ninja box. And after we've done that, following the exact same wiring diagram we connected to the original module, we're then going to write the EEPROM data to the replacement module and then write the flash data 
to the replacement module. Now, when it's writing the EEPROM and the flash data to the replacement module, this process can take a long period of time. Uh, it can take it up to 15, 20 minutes for the EEPROM data, and sometimes as much as 30 to 45 minutes for the flash data. I would say that's not typical. Usually it's probably closer to 15 minutes for the flash data write, uh, but it can take up to 30 or 45 minutes. So if your progress meter uh, kind of seems to freeze or take a long time to change, don't be alarmed and absolutely do not disconnect the tool when it is going through the flash data writing process or you may corrupt the module and damage the module. After you've written the EEPROM data and flash data to the replacement module, you're going to perform the verification function uh, when that is applicable on the scan tool and make sure that the replacement module VIN number now matches the vehicle's VIN number. So we're basically just making sure that the replacement module is seeing the same VIN number written internally that the vehicle has. Then we're going to perform the disconnect function, and then we're going to scan that module for fault codes. If there are any fault codes in the replacement module, we want to clear those fault codes. Uh, obviously, this replacement module does need to be installed in the vehicle when we're doing this process. Uh, and then after we've cleared out those fault codes, then we want to make sure we check and uh, look at service information to determine if there are any adaptations, basic settings, or resets required by the OEM service information after we've replaced the specific module that we have cloned. After we have done any of those adaptations, basic settings, or resets, then we want to rescan all of the modules and make sure there are no fault codes, and then we want to take the vehicle for any related or required test drive. So now we're going to jump over to the video portion of this so that we can see what the module cloning process looks like on the scan tool. All right, so now we're over on the scan tool portion. We're going to go into the services menu, and the services menu will take us to IMMO PROG. The IMMO PROG is going to show us a menu like this. We're going to click on the wiring diagram, which is what we actually clicked past there quickly. And the wiring diagram will show us how to connect the uh, T-Ninja box to the original module while it is still installed in the vehicle. And then, after we connect it to the original module, we're going to hit the Connect button. It's going to log in the tool. It's going to connect us to the T-Ninja box. It's going to give us the chip ID, and we're going to continue forward. Now, we're going to back up the EEPROM data first. Now, remember, this video is going to go real fast here just for demonstration purposes. It will generally take longer than this when you do it live. So after we've backed up the EEPROM data, we're going to save the EEPROM data, and we would want to name it, generally speaking, what I would name it is something with the VIN number of the original vehicle, and write down that it's the original file from the original module. So in this case, this is the EEPROM data. So we just named it original trans file. You might want to name it original trans file EEPROM uh, just for uh, good measure. So we're going to name it that. We're going to save it. Then I'm going to select all and I'm going to copy so that I can actually uh, basically paste this again when I save the additional files just to save me some typing. Then we're going to hit OK. We're going to save it in the directory that it automatically puts us into. Saves the file. And we go back, and then we're going to save the flash data. So it's going to be the exact same process. It's going to pull the data from the original module. And again, we're going to speed up the time lapse here so you can see quickly just what happens. Again, it's going to take much longer, generally speaking, than what you see in this video. So we backed up the data. We're going to put in a name for the, uh, the file for the flash data. So in this case, I just changed it to original file flash. And then I save it. So you can see we've got our original EEPROM file in the directory here. Now we're saving the flash file in the same directory. So both are going to be in the same place. They're both saved with the VIN. Then we're going to decrypt the EEPROM data. And we're going to load both the EEPROM and the flash data files we backed up. So we'll click on those and save those.
Okay, so we got both files loaded. So we got the flash file and the EEPROM data loaded. We're going to hit more. We're going to decode. It's going to decode the data. It's going to save the data after it decrypts it. And we're going to name the file something. Now, in this case, I just named it a composite file because it's a combination of the information from both the EEPROM and the flash file together. And I'm going to tell it that it's decrypted. So we're going to save that in the exact same directory we saved the other information. Now we can see it's saved in the directory. Data backup succeeded. So now we proceed forward. So now we're at the point where we have all the information from the immobilizer. We have the uh, EEPROM and flash data saved. So now we're going to proceed. We're going to, at this point, after we've backed up both the EEPROM and the flash data, and decrypted and saved the backup, then we're going to proceed. At this point, we need to connect the donor module. So whether that's a new or a, a used or a reman module, now we're going to connect that to the vehicle using the exact same wiring diagram that we used to connect the original module. We also want to install the replacement module into the vehicle, just like we would in a brand new module in any other circumstance. So we can see the files all here. Everything's where it should be. So now we're going to restore the EEPROM data first. So we restore the EEPROM data. It goes pretty quickly here. We're going to click on Restore EEPROM Data. We're going to click on the file for that, which was the one that we just named Original Trans File. So it's restoring the EEPROM data. Again, we're going to do this in a time lapse so it goes real fast. It will take significantly longer when you're doing it live on the car. Then we're going to restore the flash file. And again, restoring the flash file takes much longer than what you see in this video. So again, don't interrupt the process or stop the tool if it's during this process, or you may brick the module. And then you're in big trouble because it's likely the module will have to be replaced, or you will have to send it to somebody who has the ability to wipe out the chip on the board level and basically virginize the module which again, this could get very complicated and very difficult. So remember, do not interrupt the tool during the process when it is restoring the EEPROM or the flash file to the replacement module. Okay, so we've restored the EEPROM data. We've restored the flash data to the new or replacement module. Now we're gonna perform the verification function, which is basically checking to see if the VIN number of the replacement module properly matches the original vehicle VIN number, which is the vehicle that we are currently trying to repair. So we can see here, this VIN did match the vehicle. So the restore of the EEPROM data and restore of the flash data was successful, which means the module now has the exact same identity as the original module does. So our replacement module essentially is now in terms of software identical to the original module that was replaced in the vehicle. So now we're going to go back out from this menu and we're going to disconnect the tool because we've properly verified that it is successful. Now, after we've done all of the EEPROM work, we still have to do some additional steps. You want to consult your service information on this to verify for each specific vehicle what is required during this process. Every manufacturer is going to be different, but when we replace this transmission control module on this Audi, we need to go in and we need to reset the adaptive values in the transmission control unit. So Audi, generally speaking, will tell you what you need to do, uh, or you can go into guided functions, uh, which is the online functionality of your Top Don Pro Series tool. The guided function will walk you through the steps necessary to reset these adaptive values. Now, in this case, they're actually listed under basic settings instead of under adaptation, but we're going to reset the adaptive values for the transmission control unit. Many manufacturers will ask you before you do this reset that you get the transmission up to operating temperature, the fluid, if you will. So the fluid, generally speaking, needs to be up to operating temperature before you reset these adaptive values. So we're gonna go in, we are going to reset all adaptive values the transmission has already been warmed up to temperature. So initially we clicked the individuals. Now we're going to click reset all. So we're going to hit adjust. It's going to reset all of the adaptive values in the transmission. Again, the transmission was already heated up to proper operating temperature. 
we'll see here it's going to do it. We can see finished correctly is now the message. So we know that the adaptive value reset was carried out correctly. Also keep in mind that when you do the reset, the basic settings like this or the adaptive values, uh, it is important to rescan for codes after performing this function. So we've performed a reset of adaptive values. Now we're going to check for DTCs. We don't see any DTCs stored in the transmission control unit. So after we've performed that and we've verified that there are no DTCs stored, we know now that the EEPROM data and the flash data were written successfully. The module has been successfully cloned. The basic settings or adaptive values have been properly reset and no further action should be required other than potentially a test drive. So you would want, in this case, obviously it's a transmission control unit. So we want to heat that transmission up to the proper temperature, reset the adaptive values, then take the vehicle for a specified test drive. Uh, if the manufacturer provides one, we want to follow their routine. If they do not, you know, do a standardized test drive. If you're familiar with one or you have some kind of a protocol you've developed yourself, you're going to take it through the test drive and you're going to verify that the transmission operates normally. If it does not, there's a good chance that the used transmission that's been installed may be defective. It's unlikely that there's any problems with the control unit itself if you don't have any fault codes and all of the resets and cloning functions were carried out successfully. So at this point, we've successfully cloned this module. So now we'll go back to the very end of our presentation here, which we're just going to say a few thank yous for helping make this video possible. So again, we just want to say a couple of thank yous for helping make this video possible. Uh, I want to give a shout out and a thank you to Zach McLean and his company, Elite Automotive Solutions. Uh, Zach is located in Arkansas, and uh, he has a LinkedIn profile, which you can see the link here, as well as the Facebook uh, website for his particular mobile service company. So Zach actually performed the cloning pr uh, process that was displayed in the video. So we just want to thank him for giving us the assistance here to uh, let us record this and put this on our YouTube channel to help our customers out. So again, huge thanks to Zach. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to watch this uh, Top Don official training video on module cloning. If you do have questions or you need assistance, please do not hesitate to visit our website and reach out to our support professionals uh, in the U.S. Visit topdon.us in any other market besides the U.S. or Canada, please visit topdon.com. Again, I'm Hawken, and thanks for watching this training video on module cloning.